Hi, good morning everyone. Geekonomics here once again. Going to put a short video out today with regard to a potential answer for Extract 2 June 585 pre-release material. So this is for people studying A-level economics and considering the Global Economy paper for June 2016. Um, with regard to this, I think it is particularly likely that part of your answer may need to include some discussion of what is known as the Marshall Learner Condition. And the Marshall Learner Condition, as I hope you know if you've been doing a little bit of prep and reading around this, the Marshall Learner Condition deals with countries which are facing a persistent current account deficit problem. By a current account deficit, you'll be aware that we mean that is the scenario where the value of imports are greater than the value of exports. In other words, the amount of money leaking out of the economy is greater than the money being injected back into the economy from the sale of exports. So, if you're using the OCR textbook, you'll find that the standard diagram for this is as follows. Here we've got surplus, deficit, and then time along the x-axis. And so, basically what we consider is, we have an economy travelling along for a sustained period of time. Obviously, a deficit is not a problem, necessarily, if it's just from one month to the other. If it's persistent, then it may become more of a problem. So we have a country travelling along with a current account deficit for a sustained period of time, and the government thinks, right, we've really got to act, we've got to do something in order to try and move from the deficit position back towards, at least towards, the surplus. And one method of doing this is to engineer a depreciation in the value of the country's currency. So I'm going to say that at this point here, where this red dashed line is, I'm going to say that at this point, the country decides to engineer a depreciation of its currency. So that could involve potentially the central bank deciding to uh, reduce the base rate of interest. Just as an interesting aside, of course, today, 5th of November, is Super Thursday. Uh, Super Thursday because we're getting lots of data being published from the Bank of England with regard to inflation, the state of the UK economy, the pushback date in terms of when they anticipate base rates to start rising. Remember, we've had six years now, ladies and gentlemen, six years of base rates of 0.5% and it doesn't really look like they're going to be changing certainly in the near term. Anyway, let's get back to this. So the country decides to depreciate. You'll see in your textbook what happens is that the deficit position for the economy actually it gets worse before it starts to recover and it gets better again. And so what I'm going to look at with you today is the reason why we go from Position A, I'm going to call it here, where we've got a deficit, to position B, where we depreciate and the deficit actually widens instead of narrows, and then to position C, which is obviously what we're aiming for, which is to get the economy back up into the surplus position. This, ladies and gentlemen, diagram, this is known for obvious reasons. This is known as the J-curve. So this is the Marshall Learner Condition and the J-curve diagram is used to explain it. When I'm doing this with my students, I like to use a, some data and some tables and to just take them through positions A, B and C and explain why that's the case. So that's what I'm going to do forthwith. So here, here I've got a table laid out, ladies and gentlemen. Price of the export, quantity of the export, total revenue from the export, price of the import, quantity of the import, total expenditure on the import, and then a simple, is it surplus or is it deficit position? So I'm going to start off and I'm going to illustrate, I hope, I'm going to illustrate the scenario which is taking place at point A. And I'm just going to make these numbers up. So I'm going to say that the price of the export is £100 and I'm going to say that the quantity is 10 So the total revenue is obviously £1,000. I'm going to say that the price of the imports uh, £200. I'm going to say that the quantity of the imports is, I don't know, let's say 20 uh, 
Therefore, total expenditures, the amount of money going out on imports is clearly 20 times 200, so £4,000. And so we've got money out of 4,000, money in of 1,000, so the deficit position is minus 3,000. And it's at this point, ladies and gentlemen, that the government or the central bank decides, right, we are going to do something about this deficit position. So they engineer this depreciation. So I'm going to say that at this point then, we engineer a 50% depreciation in the currency. So think about what will happen to prices when you engineer this depreciation in the currency. Remember, and as I keep telling my students, the best way to remember this is if the currency depreciates, the price of the export always follows in the same direction. So, if you get a depreciation of 50%, that means your export prices will be 50% cheaper. So they then move from £100 per unit to 50 Now, if you take the normal demand curve for a good, any good or service, a normal demand curve, one would anticipate that if the price of the good falls, the quantity demanded will rise. You'll get, as you well know, you'll get an expansion along the curve. you get an expansion of demand. And so you'll probably be thinking to yourself, so this 10 must get bigger. But this is the crux of the problem, ladies and gents. This is it. The quantity at B does not change. It remains at 10. And so the amount of money coming into the economy has now halved. So you're trying to make things better and you've actually, you've exacerbated the problem because you're not getting half price really for your exports and so the problem is getting worse. Now of course the, the key thing is, well, why G-economics? Why, as a consequence of price falling, has the quantity demand has not gone up? Well, the reason is, ladies and gentlemen, primarily to do with, number one, time lags as a lagged effect. It takes people a certain amount of time to adjust to and to actually realise, oh hey, prices have changed here. And the other more crucial point is that firms will be in long-term contracts, they'll have negotiated contracts. If you think of big companies, they're buying on the futures markets in order to hedge their bets against price fluctuations. Well, they'll be tied into these contracts. And so just because the price of a particular good or service falls, they cannot automatically switch to purchasing at that price because they are tied into a certain contract at a certain price. And so they, in effect, become stuck at P1, Q1 until the contract runs out or until they buy themselves out of said contract. And so the quantity remains the same. What about imports? Imports were... £200. Now they're going to be 50% more expensive, so now imports are going to be £300. The quantity, however, is still going to be 20 for the same reason, time lags and contracts. Remember, if price goes up of an import, you expect quantity to fall, but actually it doesn't fall, it remains the same because of the lags and the contracts. And so now the country's hemorrhaging six grand. So you've got six grand out, and you've only got five coming in. 500, that is. And so your deficit has actually got bigger. It's now 5,500 pounds ab widening. This is a widening of the deficit, which is why we go from A to B, that the deficit gets bigger, it widens. However, it's not all bad news, ladies and gents, because after a certain period of time, the contracts run out, people realise the prices have changed, and then the country can begin to reap the rewards. So £50 for the export price, remaining at 50 because of the depreciation, still at 50. Now this 10, let's say that this shoots up, so it might shoot up to, let's say, 100. So now you've got five grand coming into the economy. The 300 for your import price remains at 300, but now we can have some adjustment in quantities. So now this might only be, let's say, 10. And so you've got 3,000 leaking out of the economy, but obviously you're five grand in, three grand out, and so now you've got a surplus of 2,000 pounds. 
And so hence we end up with a surplus at point C. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our analysis of the Martian learner condition. It's bound to be, I'm sure, part of an answer to extract two question, um, given what's on that extract. It's one of my favourites, this one, because it's really it's nice and straightforward. It's not particularly complicated, I don't think. Um, there is a, a nota bene to this, which you'll find in your books anyway. But the Marshall Learner Condition will only work if the PED for exports and imports is greater than 1. In other words, if the price elasticity of demand for imports and exports are elastic. So, by that I mean exports, nice flat curve, like so. Why does it need to be elastic? Well, it needs to be elastic because whenever price falls from 100 to 50, we want, eventually, an enormous increase in quantity, so it's from 10 to 100 here. Well, obviously, for that to happen, you need a very flat curve. And the same is true for imports, but in the opposite direction. When import prices rise, so we've got a rise in price here, we expect a huge drop-off in quantity. And again, that will only happen if your imports and exports are nice and flat. Uh, and so that then brings us really to the, that is the, that is the Marshall Learner Condition, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so I hope you found that useful. Keep subscribing and see you next time.